also say a word on an issue that I know is obviously of enormous consequence all over this country, but maybe more in Arizona than in many other areas. And that is the issue of immigration reform. And let me begin by saying I know a little bit about immigration. Just my father came to this country at the age of 17 from Poland. He came to this country not speaking a word of English, came to this country without a nickel in his pocket, and he never made a whole lot of money. I grew up in a three and a half room rent controlled apartment in Brooklyn, New York. And my mother's dream was that someday maybe our family would own its own home and not have to rent. That never happened. She died young and her dream never came to pass. But my parents, both of them, were enormously proud, my father maybe especially, to see his two sons go to college. And he enjoyed the opportunities that America gave him, and there was no prouder American than that young man who came to this country at the age of 17. Now my family story is a story very similar to many people who are here tonight. And that story is the story of America. It is the story of hard-working families coming into this country to create a brighter future for their children. It is a story rooted in family and fueled by hope. It is a story that continues to this day in families all across our country. Today, as everyone here knows, we have 11 million people in this country who are undocumented, who came to this country to improve their lives, to escape oppression, fleeing desperate poverty and violence. Let's be frank, today's undocumented workers play an extraordinarily important role in our economy. Without these workers, it is likely that our agricultural system would collapse. Undocumented workers are doing the hardest work in this country. They are harvesting our crops, building our homes, cooking our meals, caring for our kids. They are part of the fabric of this country. 11 million people came to this country so they could feed their families, escape gang violence, and desperate economic circumstances. Let me also be very clear that people came to this country because they knew that there were jobs, and if anyone thinks that employers throughout America didn't know that the workers they were hiring were undocumented, they would be dead wrong. That is the reality of where we are. Employers were complicit hiring undocumented workers for low wages. That's the fact. Slave wages, all right. And let me tell you a little story, if I might. Back in 2007, as the senator from Vermont, I went to a place called Immokalee, Florida. Anybody know where Immokalee, Florida is? What is unique about 
Immokalee, Florida, a small town near Naples, that's where they grow most of the tomatoes, low-grade tomatoes used by McDonald's and Burger King. I went there. On the day that I visited, just coincidentally, the U.S. attorney was bringing charges against a contractor for slavery. In 2007, people were being held involuntarily to work in the fields. And I saw the working conditions and the exploitation that these workers experienced. And I saw the horrendous housing that they lived in. And I'm happy to tell you that we had a hearing on this issue in Washington. We made some progress, wages went up, working conditions went up. But the truth is, there are many Immokalees all over this country where undocumented workers are being exploited. And when you exploit people who cannot defend themselves, when you exploit people by paying them low wages, what you are doing is creating a race to the bottom for every worker in America. And let me tell you something else. People can have disagreements about immigration reform. But in the year 2015, it is not acceptable to be stooping to racism and demagoguery in order to win some political votes. It is not acceptable. It is not American to be defining a whole group of people who happen to come from Mexico and calling them criminals and rapists. We have fought too hard in this country for hundreds of years to end racism, to end discrimination to revert in 2015 to that kind of ugly language. Now, in 2013, I proudly supported comprehensive immigration reform legislation that passed the U.S. Senate. Now, this is not, and I do not want to suggest for a moment, that this is a perfect piece of legislation, far from it. I believe that there must be, and this legislation begins that process, legal protection for the undocumented people in this country, comprehensive immigration reform, and a path toward citizenship. The Senate bill contained the provisions of the DREAM Act, which I strongly support, and which would offer the opportunity of permanent residency and eventual citizenship to young people who are brought to the United States as children. It is my belief that we should recognize the young men and women who comprise the dreamers for what they are, American kids who deserve the right to legally be in the country which is their home. The Senate bill was far from perfect but at least it began the process of moving us in the right direction. It is beyond my comprehension that the House of Representatives 
has not yet even begun the discussion on immigration. Instead of reverting to racism, maybe they want to deal with this issue in a serious way. Until we can pass comprehensive immigration reform, we must be as aggressive as we can in pursuing policies that are humane and sensible, and that keep families together. And this includes taking measures that are currently available, including using the presidential power of executive orders when appropriate. While the Senate passed the DREAM Act in its immigration bill, and while the House has not yet acted, I think President Obama did exactly the right thing through his executive order for deferred action for childhood arrivals. DACA, as it is called, was a good first step, but should be expanded. Deferred action should be expanded to include the parents of citizens, parents of legal permanent residents, and the parents of dreamers. job is to bring families together, not tear them apart. Yeah. 